Welcome to my review of Love and Monsters, a new post-apocalyptic movie directed by Michael Matthews and starring Dylan O'Brien, a film that at first glance I wouldn't give a shit about, but it actually surprised me. Let's talk about it. Set in a monster-infested world, we follow Joel, played by Dylan O'Brien, who learns his girlfriend is just 80 miles away. And to make this dangerous journey, Joel must find his inner hero if he wants to be with a girl of his dreams. Again, I didn't give a shit about this movie at first glance. I just caught it on VOD, and I had a free night, so I gathered with two friends, and we watched a movie, and it's actually really fun. For once, something that didn't surprise me in the least was that Dylan O'Brien really has star power. He really has a lot of charisma to him. He is really a great actor and judging from this and the other projects I've seen him in, he can really work with just any type of material. Anything serious, anything with a little bit of humor and tongue-in-cheek like this whole film is in terms of tone. He can really play the cowardly guy who's just trying to do his best and wants to prove to the world that he's brave but he really isn't and he has to learn that along the way. What this film really is is a coming-of-age story and Dylan O'Brien plays that really well and this film is his movie. There are other people in this. There's Jessica Henwick who I love, Michael Rooker, the little girl who played Baby Gamora in Infinity War, and someone else who I will talk about in a minute because I scared my roommate when we were watching the film. And he's accompanied by a dog. So the film is Dylan O'Brien and dog basically. It's always it's, it's always a good thing when you have a dog, man. And the dog here is actually really good. It's a, it's a really great dog actor in this film. And Dylan O'Brien has chemistry with the dog. So he's a good person. There you have it. There's the proof. The world also looks great and the visual effects for the monsters are pretty solid overall. They're not the best visual effects you'll ever see, but they're pretty solid, especially I'm guessing this film didn't have the biggest budget to work with. But the world itself looks but the world itself looks great. It looks old, lived in, it looks abandoned, but it's not necessarily a very ugly world. This world has been taken over by mutated giant versions of lizards and amphibians and bugs, and so it kind of looks more beautiful than if the world hadn't been quote-unquote destroyed, and even the creature designs are very creative. They didn't just make giant frogs or giant butterflies or anything like that. They took little things from here and there from past works of fiction, and they really made the best they could with their project, making these monsters just stand out and not being just random giant versions of monsters and creatures that already exist. And as I said, the film has kind of this tongue-in-cheek humor to it, and it really, really works. The film is not way too serious. It has fun with all the literal rules that you have to follow in a post-apocalyptic world where everything is trying to eat you and kill you, and that serves the story in a very nice way way. It also shows that the film is actually kind of smart when it comes to certain situations. And again, they have these very creative ways of moving the story along and bringing Joel into his arc and fulfilling that arc very well. Okay, so the actor I wanted to talk about is an Australian actor known as Dan Ewing. I looked at this guy and I'm not going to say what he plays, but I looked at him and I'm like, I recognize this dude for something. I went on his IMDb, nothing for the past 10 years. And then I get to 2009 and he played Dylan in Power Rangers RPM. For me, it's always great to see a former Power Ranger in a current project. And I thought that was awesome. And I scared my roommate because I reacted to the fact that, oh, he's a Power Ranger. So there you go. <laughs> as far as issues are concerned, I'm not the biggest fan of how they handled the Joel goes to meet his girlfriend arc by the end of it. They didn't pull off the worst case scenario that would just make the whole journey feel like a red herring because that was really what the journey was about. So they didn't do the worst thing they possibly could with that, but I just wasn't a fan with how they handled it, the conclusion. Also, when I say that the film is actually pretty smart when it comes to a lot of things, it also can be pretty dumb sometimes. There are just things that stretch the rules of reality, even giving the context of this universe in which the film is set. 
And there's something with the dog. There's an element with the dog that I was constantly curious. And they kept getting back to it. They kept giving it importance. The dog kept showing how important it was. And by the end of the film, that is never answered. <laughs> and that was one of the most investing elements of the film for me. So I just felt kind of frustrated that that was never resolved. Love and Monsters is a good 100 minutes spent on a movie. It's fun, it's funny, it's thrilling at times, it has really solid acting, clever writing, interesting directions. I thought the film stood out in more ways than one. I could not recommend it more. Just for a fun time, a fun movie watching evening with some friends. I'm giving Love and Monsters a B. Now, my beautiful geekies, have you seen Love and Monsters? Are you interested? Have you never heard about it? Do you love Dylan O'Brien? If so, watch this movie, but also watch it if you love dogs. I gotta stop hitting my microphone. Thank you so much for watching. You are the best. Check out all my reviews that I just did for the London Film Festival, the early reviews I did for The Boy Season 2 and Bly Manor as well, and I'll have more early reviews, especially for Netflix films, coming very soon, so stay tuned. And until the next video, please remember to like, to share, to to subscribe because it really helps me and helps the channel out but most importantly above everything else forever and always love each other and love the movies